Today on Sister to Sister, we have some great questions. A lady wrote in, I'm 40 years old and I have not met the one. What do I do? I think she better take every thought captive and not give way to feelings of guilt that society has to think. Oh, hello, that is a whole word for you. That's all <laughs> and more coming up on Sister to Sister. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. We are five powerful women <laughs> that love to come to your questions with a biblical perspective. Honestly, today we're kind of like five race horses getting ready to come out of the gate. So let's bring it. I'm Amy. I'm sitting in for the one and only Kathy today who's traveling the world. And Angela is with us today yes. and she's sitting in my seat where she has very small shoes to fill because I'm a size six. We're glad you're here. Okay, let's get rolling right away with this first question. I am holding out for the man that God has for me, but I'm losing hope. Oh, I'm 40. I don't want to be single, but I'm afraid that I'll never find the one. At what point do I give up hope and how do I shift the focus when it's pretty much all I think about? Mm. Corey, I'm coming to you for this one. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of women that feel this way. I think that it's a common mm -hmm. um, thought and feeling, and I and I feel for our viewer that wrote this in. Um, I, first of all, I don't think it's ever too late. I, I don't think it, you know it's ever too late to give up hope. Um, you know, we have um, one of our wonderful women on staff here that just got married recently, yes. later in life, and she actually met her wonderful husband at the grocery store. I love her love oh. story. Um, and, um, you know, so I just think that that, you know, there's an inspiration there. Um, but I also, you know, want to give a word of warning that anything in our lives that takes our focus off of, um, our relationship with the Lord can become an idol. Amen. So we want to make sure that this isn't becoming an idol that, um, you know, that, that, you know, the focus of, I want to be a wife, that I want to find the one isn't becoming the idol in our lives. And so I, you know, I would encourage, give this over to the Lord. And, and I'm not saying that, that this person hasn't done that. I'm right. sure this has been right. a yes. prayerful yeah, thing right. for yeah. many years. Yeah. But you have to be willing to say to the Lord, you know, what do you want for my life? And be willing to hear the answer that the Lord has for you. Yeah. That's good. That was good. I think a key word, it's, it's all I think about. Yeah. yeah. And, oh. and what, what, what I honed in on is holding out. Yeah. Were there other people now, uh, I think it's James says, mm. every good and perfect gift comes from God. Mm -hmm. But nobody's perfect on earth. We are yeah. a, a work in making. And when she said, or he, I'm not sure, holding out for the one, is she perhaps, I mean, she might be noble or he might be noble saying, I'm holding out, I'm making sure, I'm checking all the boxes. Uh, or is she, he or she unrealistic about their expectations mm. of what their spouse is supposed, supposed right. to be? So be very careful that you're not looking for perfection, yeah. Yeah. but that you're looking for the one. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you are a person of character, and I'm not saying that there isn't just one person for you. There, I believe God does give the gift. But if you have character, you should be able to get along with a lot of different kinds of people. Yeah. So That's a good point. I, I That's don't a good point. know. Uh -oh. Ooh. That's a good point. I'm not going to the soulmate. She I'm just flipped the table I'm there. Flip the table. Go ahead. Okay, what do you think, Angela or, or Flo? You don't you want no comment from me. Oh, yes, I do. I meant, no, you, no, you don't. 40, mm -mm. waiting, mm -mm. struggling, mm -mm. crying. Mm -mm. I already had the one. I found the one, and the one was Jesus. Then I met the other one, and that was my husband. And him and Jesus was the one, and now my husband's home with Jesus, mm -hmm. and now I'm back to one, and I'm good. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> What's, what's your answer? <laughs> oh, I agree. 
I think that, you know, I think a lot of this stuff that comes into play is a lot of cultural context, yeah, you know. Right, I think that right, I yes. have a lot of friends who are single and they are looking for the one and their laundry list of a hundred, what he My has Lord. to be, ain't going to come too easily, <laughs> you know. But also, I think that it is one of these things that as a believer, our perspective does have to remain on the Father. Right. And what I hear, and that's what breaks my heart, is like this sorrow that has kind of yes. joined her heart mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. sorrow and this sadness of feeling very alone. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my, my hope or encouragement would be that when you're found in him, you'll find everything you need, whether it ends up showing up as a husband in this season or the next, but you'll be fully satisfied right That's now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She yeah. needs to have a meeting with my daughter who says, I'm good. And he has to be very impressive for me to like him. <laughs> So maybe her. just switch your, your language. He's got to be very <laughs> impressive. To, that's, to what, that's what gets me. Mo a lot of single people today don't want to be married. <laughs> yeah. And that's a whole nother. That's a whole other. Yeah, that's another <laughs> question. But we do have this question. How do you maintain a strong connection with your spouse, Roxy, amidst uh, the demands of motherhood and career? You know, I'm going to say this, and it might sound funny or the scripture off key, but I'm going to say it because it came to my head. Uh, Matthew 5 says, Jesus says, when someone asks you to go a mile, go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. So all I can tell you is find the way to go the extra mile with your spouse. And I'm going to give you a little example. You know, isn't it those little things that we do yeah. that stick in our minds? Mm -hmm. My kids remember the little things yeah. we did. Uh, sometimes not the big vacations or so my husband loves to read and I like him with me sometimes we're not together a lot we my son says sometimes we're two ships sailing mm -hmm. across each other in the ocean with different kinds of callings mm -hmm. so he'll come along when I go to the store whatever he likes to drive he said I'll take a book and he waits for me Aww. when I'm late he takes a book down to the car and waits. And, and you know, that waiting is special to me because yeah. <clears throat> I'm not good at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know how much it takes to do that. And then when he uh, had in his heart, and I did not have in my heart, to have a Bible study in the home, mm -hmm. God convicted me. You know what? Let him pursue his passion. And you're going to bless him. Whether... Whether you get blessed by this or not, which I was, you bless him and let him follow his passion. So all I could say is go that extra mile, even if it's a little thing. That's mm -hmm. Good advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I think in the busyness, it's finding those little moments to connect. You know, it's just like with our father. You know, whenever we're busy and we're nursing a baby and we're chasing after a toddler and trying to work full time, you have to fit it in where you can. So if it is in that moment where the Cheerios are all over the floor, just stopping, looking in each other's eyes, we got this, we're gonna make it. You know, those small little connections <laughs> matter, you know, yeah. that we're on the same team together. Yeah. Little wink, hug, yes. hug, kiss, yeah, kiss. Yeah. Yes. Corey? I, I think you have to realize that it is a choice, that it's not just gonna naturally happen. That's I think true. a lot yeah. of times you think, oh, we're married and it's, you know, he knows, she knows. No, you, you have to make that choice every day and you have to verbalize that the other person is not a mind reader yes. we cannot make assumptions and so you do like you said you have to go that extra mile you have to make the choice and some you know some days it's it's not going to happen you know there's just you have to you have to make room for grace in relationships yes. you do yes. have to make room for grace but you also have to make room for doing special things, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's gonna be him doing that and sometimes it's gonna be you doing that, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's the give and take in relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And so you do, you have, to make, you have to verbalize it, you have to use the words, you have to um, you know, do the special things. There's different, we've talked about love languages mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. so you learn the love language of your spouse and you try to show them the love in the way they feel loved, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. then, you know, we've talked about this before too. You have 
have to make time to connect sexually. Mm -hmm. you, you have to make time for that. You cannot just push that aside for the 18 years that oh, your child no. is growing up. Oh, you have no. to make time for that. And you, yeah. you, if you don't connect in that way, there's gonna be problems in the relationship. Yeah. You're talking about so. giving to each other. Are there like practical thoughts, like practical ideas of how, you know, a, a wife, like, I have no ideas. How can I bless my husband today or this week? I mean, it doesn't even have to be these grand gestures, like you said, like <laughs> big vacations or anything. Little notes, mm -hmm. little, you know, yeah. just mm -hmm. tiny little mm -hmm. surprises, little, little things that mean something to them. I think make a world of difference. Yes. Yeah, That's like my so husband good. when he cooks, <clears throat> he's like a chef. <laughs> every counter, everything, it's from scratch. And he knows I like to cook and just do one thing at a time and clean it up and go to the next. We're so different. So I'll find times when he cleans all up before uh, I'm home. Uh, I'm like, yay! Uh, <laughs> I can wake up to a clean kitchen. Not that I cook. Uh -huh. But those little things that you know, you know they did the it for you. Your, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. That is so... <laughs> They said there's two kinds of people, those that like to cook and those that like to clean. Oh. Ah, is that good? I think it's so, true. Before you go to the next question, yeah. the only thing I have to say yes. is I really miss Kathy because she would fall apart as soon as she said sex. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm freaking out. Right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about it. This is where the, the rubber meets the road. I'm blushing. <laughs> It, well, it's your favorite subject as well. Oh, you okay. Yeah. okay, Flo, well, how do you handle feelings of guilt or pressure when faced with, you know, societal expectations regarding women's roles? So I have no feelings of guilt about sex, and I don't let society dictate to me what I should do. But that was not the question. Okay. So... <laughs> Regard fire me from this job. <laughs> we'll probably get fired together. Don't worry about it. Wonder Twins. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but you know, I, I really think it. You are letting. You're giving someone that power when you do that. And my answer to it is real simple. Just be real. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a uh, a teacher at a Bible school. And God had given her a revelation and she had it on her license plate. And uh, it used to just say, just be, just be. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we are, like that's that whole thing with media, like Facebook, you know, you don't go on unless you're made up. Right. You got, you know what I mean? You, you look a certain way, you take the pictures when you're at all these glamorous places. You don't take pictures of what your kitchen looks like when you're in the middle of cooking and it's a mess. You don't take pictures of the laundry room and laundry's all over the place. And so there's unreal expectations that are being put out and you're feeling pressured to give way to that. And yeah. that's just simply not healthy, mm -hmm. it's not good, and it's mm -hmm. not God. Right. Yeah. Ooh. That's it. Yeah, wow. <clears throat> I'll tell you, could I do true confessions? Do we have time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Might now, as well. Now that we're on a roll, <laughs> yeah. we are really on a roll. And I, for, I forgot about this till I had this question. Yeah. So going back in the recesses of being a new mom mm -hmm. and mom of toddlers, I was like, I'm not really good at this. I love them. They love me, that, you know, uh, mom and all that. But I was like, those ladies can do it better. Ah, I can hear They homeschool, yeah. they bake bread, mm -hmm. they, <laughs> you know, they, it was just so many things I could go through a list mm -hmm. and maybe people out there do that too. I thought, and this, this might sound weird, but these were my thoughts and this is my, messed up head. Oh, Lord, are you going to take me so somebody mm. else could raise them better? Wow. And you know how you were talking to talk yeah, about yeah, yeah, thoughts yeah. Yeah, yeah. in a minute, but it was like an overwhelming, I don't deserve these kids. I don't deserve this husband. And I thought, am I going to go? And I don't know if other people do this, but I thought it came to my head when I read this question. And the Lord said to me, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Is that Zachariah? And 
I'm laying the foundation. I've laid the plumb line. You build on it. Mm. You're not going to know how to build the whole building, but just one step at a time. And don't compare yourself to others, but learn. The wise person learns, what's this proverb say, by listening. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those thoughts began to vanish. And, you know, I don't know that I ever told, maybe my husband, I've never said this before, but this might help somebody else mm -hmm. that doesn't think they're worthy, that doesn't think they're good enough, mm. that is going through that inadequacy <laughs> feelings of comparing and contrasting what you do in others. And I just say, don't despise those small beginnings. That's Let good. the Lord build on your life. You're not going to be perfect and have it all together. Mm. That's good. Wow, that, that was, was good. so profound. You know, we've really been on a roll here today, and I hope that you have been rolling with us. There are so many more questions and subjects and thoughts that we have, and we will see you right when we come back from this break. We are back. I told you we're like five horses at a gate ready to go. So we just thank you for being a part of this program with us. You are truly dear and precious to us. Okay, let's go to the next question. Flo, I'm going to come to you. Come to me. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. I just said ready, come to ready. Me. <laughs> how, how can I encourage my overly sensitive kid to step out? So honestly, when I read this one, I felt like I needed a little more. Mm -hmm. Like when you say the child is sensitive or are they shy or, right. you know, like what exactly is going on with the child? I think that would help me a little mm -hmm. more. But for sure, um, no matter what the situation is, I think you need to manage your own expectations, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes Ooh, like good. I might be that outgoing yes. type personality and my child just simply may not. Yeah. Right. And so I'm putting that expectation wow on That's them, good. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, I kind of need to know a little bit more about how that sensitivity is showing up mm -hmm. in that child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so I definitely on the same train of thought with mm -hmm. you in that mm -hmm. I have stopped trying to change my kids and I've mm -hmm. started that's to good. try to learn from them. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Because I think extra I think a lot of especially when it comes to like extroverted versus introverted, I think a lot of extroverted people think that all the introverted people should be like them. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and Preach it's it, like Corey. it's it's like there's not a right and a wrong way to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. It's okay mm -hmm. to be sensitive. Sensitive. It's okay to be mm -hmm. introverted. And we, God made us all different mm -hmm. for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I am learning so much from my kids that are different from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 for so long, I tried to be like, okay, you should be like this and you should, and pushing them to yes, like be like the person that I am because mm -hmm. yeah. this is where I'm comfortable and this worked for me right, and right. this was successful for me, which was true for me and my personality type in the way God made me, but that's not for them. That's right. That's right. And I need, I needed to step back and finally say, what can I learn from them? Mm -hmm. And it has been such a shift for me. Mm -hmm. And it was such a good thing for me to learn as a parent. And I had to learn it far too late, mm -hmm. but I am learning that. And mm -hmm. it has been, it has been a relationship changer mm -hmm. for our relationship. And I am seeing new things in them. I'm seeing ways of how they are dealing with situations and with other people. So it's stop trying to change them and say they're overly sensitive mm. and start to see they have a, a sensitive way of dealing with things. Mm -hmm. They have empathy for people. They, they yeah. see the world and deal with things in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it has been a huge game changer yeah. That's for good. me. Mm. Yeah. That was good. And I think the sensitive or the very overt person mm -hmm. focuses on self. A lot. I'm going to take it from the angle. Right, right, right. They're, right. they're sensitive. They're not shy. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And when they're sensitive, they're focusing, everything's going to hurt me. Okay. I'm not going to okay. reach that's out. Good. That's good. And so that's a form of pride. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when they, when everything that occurs out here focuses on them being Ooh. sensitive, and what I think of, and you know, when you're saying this, you're saying train up a child the way they should go, not the way you should go. Yeah. Yeah. But I would start with things that are not uh, uh, hurting them in the way like mm. an animal. Okay. Go to an animal mm -hmm. shelter. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe go to the elderly that or a baby uh, work in the nursery with your child mm -hmm. do things that maybe mm -hmm. you would not normally do but bring them along in places where they're not uh, uh, confronted with someone else that's going to mm -hmm. ask them questions mm -hmm. and get into their lives some kids don't want that yeah. right. You know, just walk alongside me. Don't get it. Don't ask me all these questions. I don't know the right answer to them, and I don't want to give a wrong answer. So that's all my focus them on something that's not going to offend, be offensive, like an animal shelter that's or a right. nursery or something like that. That's great. I think it really brought some mm -hmm. very different perspectives mm -hmm. on, you know, that question. Okay, Angela, I'm coming to you with this question. Okay. I know the Bible says to take every thought captive, but how can I get rid of destructive thoughts that keep circling? Ooh, that's mm -hmm. tough and we all deal with it, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest strategy is not being on the defensive, but being on the offensive. Oh, so the first good. thing in the morning, whatever that scripture is, if it's anxiety <coughs> you're struggling with, if it's yeah. worry, yeah. find a scripture that speaks to that and okay. meditate on that. Speak it, declare it. I love how the scriptures say that faith comes by hearing and hearing, hearing by the word, word of God. That's right. So for me, I'm always declaring it out loud. Ooh, so I'm boy. speaking it into the atmosphere, letting my ears hear it so that my heart can catch up with what I know to be true. Right. That's Amen. good. That yeah. was good. Wow. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, I, um, <laughs> this sounds funny, but what's the scripture that the snare's broken and we mm -hmm. are escaped? When I read this, I was thinking of a bird that got caught in my house more than once. And I called the animal oh, shelter. My. I called the animal, you know, we're like taken captive because this little bird is <laughs> flying around and um, and they said, close all the windows, doors, and just open one, and the mm. bird will fly to the light. Mm. Mm. So good. So I thought, all right, close everything down that's all around, all wow. these thoughts, and go towards the, the light. light. Yes. Go that's towards the on. Lord. Let it go. And that bird, I'm telling you, that bird flew out, and I thought of that skip scripture. The snare's broken, we are escaped. Now the bird wasn't in a cage of snare, but he was engulfed in my house and flying all over the place. And that's what happens with our crazy thoughts. Yeah. They are flying all over, we can't control mm -hmm. them. Go towards the light, the scripture, mm -hmm. yep. as my sister said, and the snare's broken. Yes. Flo, how do you take every thought captive that are just circling round and round? You know, it's funny that you would come to me with that. I was trying to avoid answering it. Oh, because... <laughs> oh good. <laughs> she signed her head down. Oh, Turn this is going to be good now. <laughs> because I, I, I think like with my husband's passing, mm -hmm. I had to deal with that a whole lot more. Yeah. You know, yeah. like all the new things that I had to adjust to and um, just so many things like dealing with the grief, dealing with the changes. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to honestly say that there were many times I got overwhelmed, I lost mm -hmm. sleep, mm -hmm. um, I had to take things to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I find I was dealing with anxiety, uh, mm -hmm. probably I'm sure some levels of depression, yes. you know. Yes. And so Amy, I had to do counseling. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to take, you know, mm -hmm. don't stone me. I had to take some medicine. Well, you can't stone me anyway, but yeah. you know, um, you know, That's there right. were things that I really yes. had to do to help mm -hmm. me. And, and, and funny because I know to do what of you course. just said to do, mm -hmm. but I wasn't in that that's frame famous. of mind. Yeah. That's right, right. To do it. And so thank That's God hard. for people yes. who prayed me through yes. it. Yes. 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 And you know, we know that there are traumatic situations mm -hmm. happening yeah. in mm -hmm. so many mm -hmm. lives and we're praying for you. You're always in our thoughts and in our prayers and those thoughts that are just circling and circling, mm -hmm. just know one thought for sure is that he loves you Amen. Mm -hmm. and good. he will redeem you. He'll buy you back mm -hmm. and he'll take care of you. We'll be right back after this break. So like
like always, I hope that our sisters, and I know we have, left you with some really good nuggets. But the greatest nugget is the Word of God. And today we're coming to you out of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus from the dead, now we live with great expectation. What are you hoping for? What are you waiting for? Listen, whatever it is, don't let the adversary rob you of your hope. God put that expectation in you. He put that desire in you to believe, to press forward. And we want to encourage you to do so. Even if you are like Sarah, whose womb was dead, you feel like I've been believing God for this thing so long, I don't know what to do. And then the angel of the Lord comes and visits you and speaks life and that dream that vision that hope comes alive again and I'm telling you that the God we serve is the God of the resurrection power believe him be encouraged amen, amen. do not let go of your great expectation today whatever you're believing God for and we always like to end with the scripture and that is as iron sharpens iron so one sister sharpens the other let's go we'll see you next week